Welcome back to the Brandon Parnes Hour Fun. I am joined by a two-time Nickelodeon Game Show host. He has a brand new project launched on Kickstarter called Nth Level. Mr. Phil Moore is here today. Hello, Phil. How are you? I'm in talking with Brandon now. Man, I'm great. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm so happy that you did that because I was uh, I was actually on YouTube right before trying to see if I could get the music. And I was just going to play and see if you would sing along to it, but you did it for me, so no hey, problem. Listen, I, read, I read your mind. I knew what you wanted. I know what the people want. Yes. Bring it. <laughs> yes. Um, so let's, of course, start with Nick Arcade. That kind of puts you on the map. Um, that I remember that was one. I loved every game show on Nickelodeon, but that was uh-huh. definitely one of my like top three or four. It was, it was a great show because it was just so inventive, and it... And and um and kind of going with what amp level what you're promoting now um it was just video games at that time were were very popular of course they're very popular now with all the technology these days but it was a cool idea to take a game show around video games it was a right. super cool idea and I've never really been into video games but I loved game shows and taking something that seems cool like video games for me and then putting them in something I know I love like game show it was a perfect match well that was the thing I think was the coolest about um, the creation of uh, James Bethea and Karim Mehta I mean they came up with this idea where they took something that was popular at the time I mean yes it's grown now but I mean think about like you know the first time you you got uh, a computer or the first time you went on the internet I mean it was kind of like that it's popular now we all use those things but imagine the first time you got your hands on that yeah. but they figured out a way to uh, be able to uh, appease the hardcore gamer and the novice at the same time. Exactly. And that's what I thought was great about it. Because you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of websites that I watch and a lot of websites I subscribe to, a lot of games that I play, and and there, there it's like two camps. There's the group that uh, I play from time to time. I really do enjoy games. I, I really like them a lot. But there's no way I can go online and shoot them out in a group situation. And then there's the people who are like, I'm hardcore. I go online. My name is Battlekill. And I go and replay whatever, you know. And yeah. this show was able to uh, bridge the gap between the two, you know. Um, yeah. And so whether you were a hardcore gamer or somebody who just had a good time playing games, it, le- it leveled the playing field. Definitely. Uh, and I think, I think that's what... And then because it was using new technology, um, it, 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 it crossed so many barriers that, that no one had ever thought of. Uh, it's just these two, uh, those two guys uh, from New York City. It was, it was an incredible creation that I was just really happy to be a part of. Yeah, and I feel like every kid's dream at that time and every kid who watched it was dream to go into the video zone. Right, right, and right. and um, of course it was just a green screen, but the way they augmented it um, was amazing. Did you ever get to play the games in the video zone? Did you ever at all, like backstage or whatever? Oh, of course. I mean, um, we we were we were what well, everybody who worked on the show. Uh, and I mean everybody. It didn't matter if you were the person that was the craft service person. If the makeup uh, artist wanted to go in there, if the wardrobe lady wanted to go in, uh, the sound guy. It didn't matter. Um, they were always happy to let everybody run uh, run the game. You know, Andrea Lively ran it. Uh, I ran it a few times to get a sense of what was going on. I mean, everybody wanted to do it just because of the same reasons that you and and the people watching the show wanted to do it. But for me, it was a little bit of business business involved in that because I also wanted to get a sense of what the contestants were going through so Definitely. as the guy outside, I could kind of help them along. Definitely. You know, I, I, I could empathize with them because I knew what they were trying to deal with. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I always found it interesting that even though they do get a chance to practice run the 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 the, uh, the video zone, and I don't mean they 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 got to run what was going to be on the game. Like if they were on a game and and it, and it was going to be the, whatever the three games were, they would run a different one. So there was yeah. no, you know, everything was fair. They didn't get to practice their run 
on the yeah. show. They ran something from a previous game. Yeah. So it always surprised me that even though they got a chance to get oriented to it, it's something about being in that situation and hearing like the people cheering and knowing that the, the cameras were rolling that it always seemed to make them nervous. And um, you know, a lot of the comments I get from people, uh, I've always been like, why didn't they just jump up? Or why didn't yeah. they just run? Or why didn't they just duck? Oh my gosh, it was right there in front of them. But I think it's a different situation when you're in the midst of that moment and you know there's prizes on the line, there's, you know, 300 people out there watching you and, um, you know, it, it, there's, there's something at stake. Yeah, definitely, because we had Mark Summers on, and I know you know Mark. We had Mark Summers on last, a few weeks ago, and um, he said the same thing when they would do the obstacle course on Double Air. Kids would just freeze up. Right, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, when, yeah, when you give them a chance to get them oriented to it, they'd be great. I mean, you know, yeah. they wouldn't have anybody. In, the whole point, the whole process of getting contestants on the show was to make sure, you know, they knew how to play games. They were had a knowledge of, of trivia. They were good at answering Q&A puzzles and things. Yeah. And, and, of course, we give them a run-through. But, you know, you go ready, set, go. And all of a sudden, it's like, uh, yeah. you know, with the, with the, with the, with the, uh, when the lights came up. It's yeah. something about being in that spot that, um, you know, so for all the people who have made the comments and have made comments over the years, it really is something different when you're actually yeah. put in front of the, the cameras. Definitely. And, um, you know, and uh, they count you in, three, two, one, and we start rolling, and you realize, oh, gosh, this is a real thing. Yeah. Um, you know, throws you off a little bit. Definitely. A couple more questions about Nick Arcade. In the video zone, one, because this is just from a fan's perspective, um, when they would, like, climb up something, like, go up, were there actually stairs in there? Yeah, oh, yeah. So, I mean, the thing, anything that you, the thing, anything you actually had to touch was yeah. real. Wow. Um, uh, and, and, and anything that you um, didn't actually have to physically um, grab one to step on, that was all um, created through the computer generation. So yeah. if you have to, if you saw the kid climbing a tree, there was a, a, a green pole with, with spokes on it where they could put their hands and their feet so they could climb up. Essentially climbing sort of a ladder. Um, yeah. and, then we would, then, and then the technicians would overlay an image of, of a coconut tree, a palm tree, to make it look like, you know, what was going on. Um, when they had to swing over the... Um, when they had to swing over the river after activating the rope, there was a pole that was pulled back. And until they hit the right spot, the pole would not slide across in the real set. So yeah. you really couldn't go across until you hit the right spot to activate the pole that you could then swing over. So there was a real thing to, to interact with so that you did have to grab on something, climb up something, step on something, hold on to something, and, and swing. So those things were all real. But like you said, it was all just the color, just the color. Well, actually, in our case, it wasn't green screen. It was blue screen. Blue it screen. Was just, it was all just um, stuff painted blue. Yeah. Um, so we have about four minutes left in this segment. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of NSYNC, and if anybody has read the has read the Nick Arcade Wikipedia page or seen the whole show, Joey Fatone was a contestant on Nick Arcade. <laughs> Yes, he was. He was so up. As a matter of fact, I mean, of course, I remember that. Um, but it, uh, what I was doing up until it ended uh, uh, back in 2013, I was actually a producer on G4. I actually was a writer and producer on the show X-Play. And it was kind of like really cool for my career because it was like my life had gone full circle. Here I have started, like you said, out hosting a show about video games. And here I am now, a grown-up man, producing a TV series about video games. And um, we did a thing one time where we were uh, interviewing stars that were attending the Batman Live show. Yeah. And Joey Fatone was one of the people we were going to interview. And it was just crazy because everybody was yelling and screaming to talk to all of the celebrities showing up. And Joey Fatone was really excited about like, hey, it's Phil. You know? Yeah. And I thought that was kind of cool because he had a blast on the show. And uh, as well understand, some of his fellow NSYNC buddies um, we're kind of jealous. They're like, oh, man, you got to go on this show. Yeah. So um, it's really cool. Again, it just lets you know that people are people, and they were just they were just real, and they loved yeah. what they did, and they loved being a part of that experience. And, um, you know, you never know who anybody's going to grow into. It was cool seeing Joey again after all of these years. I mean, like I said, this is like 2013 that I saw him last. Wow. And I'm, I'm wondering, I'm, in my brain, I'm wondering, does he remember me? Does he know who I am? 
And you ever just go on <laughs> That is so awesome. Because I want to know if you really if you've seen each other since. Um and so that's that answers my question. That's really, really cool. Yeah, um it really is. Um yeah. have you aside from Joey, of course, have you ran in any t- into any other former contestants who are on the show? We have about a minute left. Well, Michael, Michael Bauer, um, Michael Ray Bauer from Salute Your Shorts was on the show. Yeah. And, and he and I are buddies. Um, I actually, you know, I actually may go on my website and, oh, I go on Twitter and repost some pictures. He had a birthday party a few months ago, like three or four months ago, and I went to his party. Venus DeMaro from the show was there. I see, I see them quite often. Um, uh, anybody else on the show? Not really. I mean, oh, I take that back. I ran into a guy at Best Buy. Um, he's like, you know, 26 years old or whatever now. And when I walked in, he was like, oh my gosh, I was on the show. And I live in California now, so I mean, he did like the whole coast to coast move. And I actually ran into a young man who was a contestant on the show. I didn't really remember him, but you know, he was, he, he knew the show back and forth and clearly he, he was, he was there and it was really cool just listening to, his enthusiasm as he reminisced about his experience on the show. So I'm Definitely, definitely. We'll experience. be right back with Brandon Parnes Hour Fun. Sorry to cut Phil off. Welcome back to the Brandon Parnes Hour Fun. I have Phil Moore on the phone. Hello, Phil. Hello. Yes. Um, that very enthusiastic, Phil. Um, so we were talking about Nick Arcade before, and we were talking during the break that um, – Nick Arcade and a bunch of other great Nickelodeon game shows are n- gonna are now or going to be on DVD, which is amazing. It really is. I, I got the word from somebody, and from what I understand, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think it's somewhere around ten dollars. Yeah, which is amazing because you're getting like the big six, you know, Double Dare, Guts, Nick Arcade, Legend of the Hidden Temple, um, uh, Figure It Out, oh, and Super Sloppy Double Dare. Yeah, uh, and and the quality that's what's really going to be great seeing it in the clear quality because. Most of what I've seen on YouTube, you know, it's kind of blurry and stuff, but um, this is like back in the quality of how it looked when it originally aired. So um, that, that's really exciting to see. And according to Amazon, 202 minutes of good game show goodness. So that's that's a good deal right there. Um, Your <laughs> On was a great game show as well. Not on the DVD, sadly, but there's plenty of episodes on YouTube. And um, that was a fun, very unique show. It's kind of like a game show mixed in mixed in with camera can candid camera for kids. It was a really cool show. It was. You know, it, it's it's interesting because it's referred to as uh, one of the most underrated shows on Nickelodeon. Um we were only on for like a midsummer replacement. Uh, it didn't even get a full run like regular series. We were only slated to come in and do a handful of episodes to kind of fill the gap in between, you know, the seasons. And um you know and it was it was fun. I mean I enjoyed it. I, I get a, I give my props also to uh, Travis White and Vivian Collins, because they, in my opinion, had the, um, the, the the business of the show to do out in the field with the contestants. Um, I had a lot to do, but I was in the studio with the audience, and, I mean, that's what I gravitate to. That's what I love the most. I, yeah. I love, just like chatting with you, man, interacting with the people, interacting with the fans. Um, that That's really what I, I, I seem to really enjoy the most. Um, out in the field, Travis and Vivian were dealing with what I dealt with on Nick Arcade, and that is taking two kids who have never been on television before and helping them be enthusiastic about doing these performances in order to win prizes. That's yeah. a more difficult task. But, um, yeah. you know, people either love, love, love the show or they're just kind of on the fence about it. But it was a nice a nice piece of fun back in the day. And it's funny because that's, I call that my later Nick era. Yeah. By that time, it was like, you know, almost the year 2000. I think it was 1999. I got rid of the high top fade. And I pretty much look on that show like how I look now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now I'm on the days of looking like, uh, you know, Carlton Banks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, or LeVar Burton. <laughs> yeah, LeVar Burton. Yeah. Um, and um, so, Nick Arcade, you're on um, seasoned host um, from Nickelodeon. Because I want to be a, a TV host when I grow up. That's my ultimately ultimate end game. At, ultimate goal is to be like a TV host, whether it's a variety show or a talk show or a game show, uh-huh. whatever. What advice do you have for me in taking on this this task? Um, well, it's real simple. If you want to be a host, the biggest, the, the biggest thing to remember is being a host nowadays is not about 
how it used to be back in maybe like the 70s, where it was like, hey, welcome to the show. I'm Bob. Great to see you. You know, it's, it's all about being yourself. YouTube uh, and places like on an uh, internet website and social media has gotten the public used to people being real. Yeah. And, and, and that, that, and that is whatever that is for you. Like, I mean, I'm a different guy than Mark Summers, but if you put us in a room, just sitting around having a cup of coffee, you will realize that that's who we are. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm not performing. He's not performing. The thing about being a host, this is my advice to you is, it is being a charismatic traffic cop who yeah. cares more about the people he's dealing with than, than themselves. Yeah. In other words, you know, you don't necessarily have to get in the last line. You don't yeah. have to necessarily get in the punchline. If you feel that something landed well and it worked, that's what's most important. It's about giving it over to the audience. Yeah. So being yourself and being that charismatic traffic cop to keep things moving and just be you. That's Definitely. Um, let's talk about your brand new project, Nth Level. This is a really cool idea. It's it, You're funding it on Kickstarter right now. Um, and it's it's not a reboot of Nick Arcade, but kind of inspired by it in in the fact that it is a game show. It involves video games, and it's an elimination style game show. Would it be filmed in a studio, or would it be like out in the world? How would it? What what is it basically? <laughs> uh, okay, so you, I love the way you put it. It's inspired by. Uh, I kind of like the, and that's what it is. It's kind of like you know you had Star Wars and New Hope. And a lot of people compare Guardians of the Galaxy to that. You yeah. know, they're not the same, but you can clearly feel the similarities and the kinship, even though the technology is far more advanced and the visuals are, are much more stunning. So yeah. um, we put the band back together. James Bethea, Karim Metef, who created the show. Andrea Lively, who was the announcement, announcer on the show. Even a lot of the people who worked on Nick Arcade and other departments, like producers and writers and things, they've come back on board. What we've done is we've taken technology that exists today and that ability to actually put you inside of a world, kind of like what you, you know, we're, we're used to seeing things with mocap. We're used to seeing things where you put on the helmet and all of a sudden you're immersed inside the world. Um, but we also know that people do online gaming and communicate with other people, other places, and interact together. But instead of it being a situation where you're looking at your TV screen at, at characters moving around, we're looking at a situation where if you're at our studio and you're playing in studio, your face is superimposed on a character. And then as you see yourself, you look down, and instead of seeing a character's head, body, and arms, you look down and you see your hand holding whatever you might be holding on to. Gotcha. Um, it, is it is an elimination style game. Um, uh, the, the amount of rounds is still be determined. It's still being worked out right now because they have the basic idea of the show. They have the way the show will work. Um, right, now, right now, what they're just trying to figure out is whether or not it's too long, too short, you know, what rounds are the best rounds. But basically, it's going to give a person the chance to come into our studio, gear up, sit down, and then through the optical sensors that they'll be wearing, see themselves surrounded by the world. You know, Nick Arcade put you inside of a video game. This show will put the video game world around you. Gotcha. Um, would it be like in front of a studio audience like Nick Arcade? Yes. And, uh, and it's interesting, too, because we've had a conversation about that. We actually kept from the studio audience, we, we actually hid from them what the contestants actually did on Nick Arcade. When they went through those doors into the video zone, the doors closed, and then behind the doors and the walls were the set that the kids ran on. Yeah. So the studio audience watched their performances on monitors, and they saw in the studio what you saw at home Yeah. Um, to kind of keep the magic there because, of course, we were dealing, we were dealing with kids. But yeah. this show, we're going to be dealing with adults. So... We know adults are smart. We know adults get it. We know that you would get it. You know what I mean? So yeah. we don't feel like we have to conceal it and keep it from you. As a matter of fact, I think that's going to be part of the cool hook of the show. As you watch up on the monitors, this person immersed in this world and dodging boulders and alien creatures and this other person that they're playing against that's sitting at home in Seattle. Meanwhile, when you look right there on the stage floor, you see them climbing up on a 
green boulder, or a green yeah. uh, a green ledge, or, or or you know sliding down a green pole. But then when you actually look and see the monitor, they are they're transferring themselves from one spaceship to the other spaceship while dodging a barrage of like laser blasts. You know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely. So we're breaking down that fourth wall for our studio audience so they can actually see the action in real time both ways. That's really, really cool. And and if this if this gets funded, that just that would be a great show. Um so of course you're funding it on Kickstarter. Your right. ultimate goal is I think two point five million. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I have to, no no not not two point five. No, 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 no. It's um uh, uh like about a quarter of a million. Um, quarter of a million. Twenty uh, yeah. Um and you know, that's to get that's the ground one to get it up, to get the show started, to get it shooting. Um, and get a few episodes in a can. So, yeah. um, you know, if anybody knows about, you know, television series, they, they, they take thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. Because this one is being independently produced outside of a studio source. Um, this is really why we're going with the Kickstarter way. Um, yeah. you know, we see a lot of successful projects, um, get funded that way. And we, we honestly, this came from listening to the fans. We did this thing uh, in New York about two years ago. Bill? Hello? Welcome back to the Brandon oh. Barnes Hour of Fun. I have Phil Moore from Nick Arcade. You're on an nth level. Hello, Phil. How are hey, you doing? Man. Hey, man. I have a good time with you. Uh, so, you know, the day is good. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, so I'm just trying to think about what else to talk about. M level. Um, you're funding it on Kickstarter right now. It's a fantastic project. You should definitely back it. Um, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, of course, Nick Arcade is on DVD now. Um, you're on is on YouTube somewhere. Um, <laughs> any other projects you have lined up? Well, you know, um, it's funny, I just, uh, you know, I, I actually tried to get, the, you know, we're talking about putting the band back together. Um, you know, we put together, the, the guys are and I, and the women are getting back together to do end level. Uh, and I'm actually, think this is happening, one of the things that helped inspire this whole end level project uh, are, are, are the fans. I mean, we, we got together for this uh, event in New York called 92Y, based off of a book. Uh, which people need to go get if they love Nickelodeon. It's called uh, Slime, an oral history of Nickelodeon, past, present. And um, it's, it's a, it, because of this book and becoming a bestseller, um, we all got together in New York City for this, what we thought was going to be a cute little show with, you know, a handful of people. But it was everybody from Nickelodeon pretty much. I mean, not just the on-camera talent, but, you know, the people who were the, the, the writers, people who were the art directors that built the set, the people who um, composed the music, the animators who drew the, the Nick tunes. It was an amazing experience. And we thought that maybe, you know, we thought maybe, you know, a thousand people would show up or whatever. And it was standing room only. The fire marshal had to turn, around, turn away so many people. I think in attendance it was almost 10,000 people. Wow. Thing. It was like, you know, it was kind of like when you see at Comic-Con, where yeah. people go to Hall H for whatever. And in, what they would do is they would just rotate different panels. So, like, the Double Dare panel went out, the animated panel went out. You know, we went out with a panel of um, a bunch of people from the various shows. Uh, I think we were out there with the people that did the Welcome Freshmen and, and, and Wild and Crazy Kids. And it was, it was an amazing time. But as we began to talk, and share our experiences that we've each had over the last 20 years. And I'm not talking about, this is what we're saying on stage. I'm talking about the people that worked at Nickelodeon and the other on-camera people. When we just talked and shared our experiences, the one thing that we kept hearing repeatedly was, wow, can you imagine what kind of show Nick Carcade would look like if it was being done with today's technology. Yeah. We weren't just hearing this from, you know, the people that worked on Nick Arcade. We were hearing this from, you know, the people that were a part of other shows that were on Nickelodeon back in the 90s, talking about what it would be like now. And we and then when we did our little uh, our meet and greet with, 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 with fans that were in attendance of this great event, um, we kept hearing it over and over and over again. I mean... 
I did, I did uh, the, the meet and greet we did with taking pictures and signing autographs with people was about almost two hours. And I would say that 75, 80% of the people whose hands I shook and pictures I took pictures with and autographs I signed, about 80% of them always talked about, man, can you imagine Nick Arcade done today? Yeah. And so I think the thing that's really cool, uh, just kind of me, me just kind of giving a, giving a, a humble bow. Yeah. To, to, to people like you and everybody that watched Nickelodeon back in the day and, and, and notably Nick Arcade is like, wow, well, thank you so much for, for, for loving the show, being fans, liking what we did. For us, it was just a fun day. Yeah. I gotta admit, I will say that that's the word I would use more than anything else. It was a blast. And it is kind of interesting that I could actually walk away and say that was a job also. The idea that that was my job, to have that much fun and get paid for it uh, was just like a dream come true. But here it is now, you know, all, you know, 20 years later, and people are still talking about it. So I'm just glad that um, people spoke up. I'm glad that uh, James and Karim are the type of guys who still have an ear for what people are saying. And I think all of us involved have a heart for the fans who are still fans today. So... I, I really mean this genuinely. The fans are the inspiration for doing end level. Um, yeah. James and Karim, those guys are just computer guys, man. I, I, I think of James and Karim uh, like, like, like you know, uh, Sheldon and, and um, um, uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember the guys. You know, two guys from the Big yeah. Bang Theory, yeah. you know? Um, I think of, I think of them like those two guys, uh, and the fact that you know they so they have ideas all the time. They are technically technical gurus and so they've had this idea but you know sometimes you think of things and you just put them on the shelf because you're thinking well it's not going to go anywhere or who wants to see that but after we did this reunion show um celebrating you know classic nickelodeon it was clear that um that's the one thing that just kept coming up over and over and over again and that's when they said well maybe there is an audience for this and so that's why this Kickstarter is really a reflection of what people have asked for, but at the same time, it's also kind of um, uh, kind of a request to kind of go, well, if you really want it, then we really need your support. Um, yeah. Because to get this thing going, um, it's going to require the type of, of, of tangible support that we heard from people when they talked about just how much they love the, the show. Definitely. And the, the notion of seeing something in the future. Um, so I got to tell you, we're, we're still going to be going out doing things now. You we're talking about upcoming projects. I'm making more and more appearances now as a result of that one event. I'm yeah. getting out there, talking to the fans. Um, I've done a couple of Comic-Cons. Uh, I did uh, Stanley's Kamikaze. Awesome. Uh, I've got um, our, an, an 80s classic con coming up in Carson, California in a couple of, in August. Um, and so I basically realized, wow, people really want to hear what's going on. I mean, that's why when you called, you're a great guy. You called and you want to talk about it. And I'm like, yeah, whatever you want to talk about. Ask me anything. I'll talk about anything. Um, because it was a great part of my life, man. A great part. Nickelodeon was so great to me. And the, and the fans, the people that watched the show were so amazing. Um, I'm, and LL Cool, J, LL cool J said, I got nothing but love for them. And, um, and so that's what's going on right now. Aside with everything else, I'm producing out here in Los Angeles, California, you know, for a living. I just, um, I just finished producing a show for BET. I'm about to do some stuff uh, for Fremantle. Um, but those are like just, those are, those are great projects. Those are things to pay the bills. Those are things to help, um, you know, eventually get other bigger projects up and on the air. Uh, but for right now, my focus is, like, kind of getting back in touch with uh, the Nickelodeon people, the Nickelodeon fans. It's, it's yeah. been such an amazing roller coaster ride, and it had to come full circle again. Uh, so I'm actually, for market calendars, I, you know, I'll, I'll keep posting things on Twitter and, and on my Facebook fan page, um, about, you know, upcoming appearances that I'll be making, places that I'll be going. Um, because uh, it, 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 it's such a great, great trip down memory lane, you know? Definitely, really definitely. Um, and where can people find you? Where, um, what are those links? What are those sources for um? Okay, so my Twitter, Twitter is um, uh, Fillmore for you. 
Um, it's P H I L M O R E, the number four, the letter U. On Facebook, it's my name, Phil Space Moore, but it's the one that says fan page. Um, I actually started out with just like a personal one, yeah. um, where I just kind of talk about, you know, hey, today I went to Starbucks. Yeah. I, I started, <laughs> but I started one, it says fan page on it. You know you're at the right one because it's all capital letters, and when you click on it, you will actually see it as my cover page, the Nickelodeon set. Yeah, the Nick Arcade set, so you know you reached the right place. So those are two places to like that hook up with me. Um, you know, I respond to people that you know. A lot of people go, "Why wow, you actually take time out of your day to respond?" I'm like, "Well, I kind of wait till the end of the evening and respond to stuff all at once." But um, that's my that's my end of day. I, I do not go to bed until I've responded to uh, uh, as many of the uh, the people who chimed in as I possibly can. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, and so right now, but like I said, right now the big push tenth level. We're trying to get it up. We're trying to get it going. Um, it would be amazing. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. to 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 take the awesomeness created in the '90s and just just revitalize it, it to the next level. Yeah, it absolutely would be. Take it to the nth level. Yeah, take it to the nth level. There you, there you go. Yes. Um, yeah. So I'm 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 very excited. I hope it gets funded. Um, Phil Moore, thank you so much for being here. Um, we have about um, two minutes left. Um, see any good movies lately? <laughs> Look, I just I just saw Age of Avengers two, Age of Ultron. Yeah, how was it? Don't no spoilers, but how was it? It was it was it was it was a great movie. It was a great great movie. Um, you know the cool thing about it is it it. it it bridges two different phases of Marvel's cinematic universe. You know, it taps into what we've already seen, and it sets you up for what's to come. Definitely. Um, you know, so it was it was a great movie. And I guess I'm not going to I'm not going to give any spoilers. And you know what? Since we got a couple minutes left here, you know what I want to talk about too, which is a little little known thing. You know, yeah. I did a whole lot of episodes of Figure It Out. Yeah. Um, with Summer Sanders. We only have about um, thirty seconds left. Okay. Okay, but I, I told you a second ago I was dropping off my son at work. Oh, yeah. When I figured out there were these three kids that did the charade brigade. Oh, and wow. My son, my son, David Moore, was one of those kids. Whoa. <laughs> so, that's a little bit of like inside Nickelodeon trivia that nobody knows. That one of the charade brigade was my son. Wait, and here's nothing. There's an episode of uh, all that when Milkman turned Super Dude into a little boy. That's yeah. That's my same son. And when Keenan and Kel, when Keenan was going to be moving, and Kel was having a flashback to when they were little kids. Again, little Keenan was my son. That's yeah. crazy. I'm going to point to my son. This is little trivia stuff that nobody knows. That kid, that same kid, is my actual son, David Moore. That's crazy. Thank you so much for joining us, Phil Moore. Thank you at home and wherever you are for joining us today online and wherever you listen. Um, thank you, Phil Moore, once again. Um, and... And, yeah, we, um, we'll see you next week for our final week of shows for the season. Um, and, yeah, um, stay tuned for Carson Daily. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, keep listening, everybody.